So number 16 then from the 2015 advanced tyre. There we go, a second order differential equation. 10 marks, just what you want to see. Should be nice and straightforward as long as nothing nasty turns up. Usually with a big positive coefficient here, that indicates a negative discriminant, which will give you sines and cosines. Which, if you had sines and cosines on this side, can turn a bit nasty on you. But you don't have that there, so this should be okay then, I think. So the first part is, what about the complementary function? What about the solution to that equation equal to zero? Well, of course, what you do is you try solutions of the form e to the mx, and when you pop that in, you get the auxiliary equation, which would just read m squared plus 2m plus 10 equals zero. So m will be, and you know straight away, that's not going to factorise. Multiply to give 10 and add to give 2. So it'll be negative 2 plus or minus the square root over 2 of 4 minus 40 is negative 36. So m is going to be negative 2 over 2, and that will be, oh, I might as well put it down, plus or minus 6i, taking the 36 out and leaving the square root of negative 1 upon 2. So there you go, m equals negative 1 plus or minus 3i. Now there's actually two marks here. One mark was for getting this auxiliary equation, and another mark was for solving it. But the statement after that is fairly straightforward. That means you've got for your complementary function, y will be e to the, remember it's that part there, negative x times a lots of cos of 3x plus b lots of sine of the same thing, 3x. And stating that gives you the third mark. Now, apparently they're going to let you have it if you, from here, continue to say just the fact that M stands for this. That means I'll have two of the form of, I'll have E to the negative 1 minus 3i times x, and I'll have E to the negative 1 plus 3i of x, where you've got, I'll just use the same things, a linear combination of the two of them. They're letting you have the mark for writing that down, but that's not going to lead you anywhere. Unless you turn it back into this form, you're just going to get into a bit of a, a mess trying to differentiate with these complex numbers. So just use the result that comes from that when you manipulate it a bit and join them together to form this. Well, that was the complementary function. So back to what was it on the other side? What did I have to get it to equal to as well as that? So I'm looking for the particular integral now. What would produce this? Well, I haven't got any of those so far. So that's completely clean. So I can just try a simple c e to the 2x. See if that works. Rattle that through this. So I need dy by dx, which will just be 2c e to the 2x. The second derivative, which will be times 2 again, 4c e to the 2x. And then feed them into that. Not already. There's a couple of marks here. One for trying a particular integral of this form, and one for having these two derivatives. Ooh, look at those marks. Look how little ink there is. Then feeding that in would give you one of them. So it'll be 4c e to the 2x plus two of them. 2c e to the 2x plus 10 of them. 10c e to the 2x, I'm going to run out of space, should come to 3 e to the 2x. Now, e to the 2x is common to everything here, and e to the anything can never be zero, so you can just divide that straight out, and we're left with 4c plus 4c plus 10c equals 3. So that's 18c equals 3, so c equals 3 over 18, which means that that cancels down to 1 sixth. So then I've got my particular integral is y equals one-sixth of e to the 2x. There's another mark for finding c. There's no mark just for stating it back into here, though. The next mark is for putting the two together to get the general solution, which just means these two parts here, the complementary function and the particular integral. So maybe I'll just squeeze it down here. So I've got for my general solution, y equals 
e to the negative. Now, in the marking scheme, they've got that multiplied out. There's no need to do that because it's just as good with a factorised form there. You've just got the one product here when it comes to differentiate later rather than having two products. So we've got a cos 3x plus b sine 3x plus, oh, I've, cr I've crushed into this to deviate around it a bit. There's the general solution. And that's worth a mark. That's seven marks. Let's get that up there. Now there's three marks left. And that'll be for finding the values of A and B given these initial conditions. So we can use the first of them straight away here. It says when X is zero, Y is one. So one would equal, I'll just pop it all in, that'll be a zero. That'll be A cos, that'll be a zero. That'll be B sine, that'll be a zero plus one-sixth of e, and that'll be a zero. So there's not a lot here. So one's going to be equal to, now the sine of zero is zero, the cos of zero is one, and that's just one, so that whole thing just comes to a plus a sixth for a sixth of one. Which means that, maybe I'll just pop it over here, a equals, taken one-sixth away, a equals five-sixths. That's a mark. Now you know what a is, we can just pop it in. So that means this is now reduced to y equals e to the negative x times 5 sixths of cos 3x plus b sine 3x plus 1 sixth of e to the 2x. Now to, in order to use this one, we'll have to differentiate that. So dy by dx will be... Unfortunately, that's going to be negative e to the negative x, and then leave this bit alone. 5 sixths of cos 3x. But even if you had expanded them to begin with, you're still going to have to write the same number of sines and cosines down. And then leaving that alone, that will be e to the negative x, and then this part will become, so it'll be 3 of them, 5 over 2, that will turn to sine of 3x, but it'll be negative. And this part will go to plus, and that'll be 3b cos to the 3x. Oh, and I've just run out of room. Or can I just squeeze you in? And that'll just be two times that, which is a third of, as it disappears into the distance, e to the 2x. Now, there's no need to tidy it up because it's just an evaluation. So now we can see x is 0, dy by dx is also 0, so that equals, now just put zeros through all of this, e to the 0, 5 sixths of cos 0, b which I don't know, of sine 0, plus e to the 0 times negative 5 upon 2 of sine 0, 3 b cos 0, plus one-third of e to the zero. Well, I forgot there was one mark for differentiating it out. These final two marks look like the longest in the whole thing. <sighs> so what's that? So zero equals, you now all the sine zeros disappear. The cos zeros turns, turn into ones. So this says you've got negative, and all you've got in this part is five-sixths. That's a one, that's a one, that's a zero. And all you've got in this part is this 3b. And this part is a third. So if I just rearrange that, 3b would equal, if I take that over, I've got 5 sixths minus a third, which is a half, divided by 3 means that b equals a sixth. Not quite the final mark yet. The final mark is just for popping it back into here to finish it off. So finally, the particular solution is going to be y equals, and where were we? We're here, e to the negative x times 5 upon 6 cos 3x, b is 1 sixth, plus 1 sixth of sine 3x, plus 1 sixth of e to the 2x. There's the final mark. There are things you could do with this. You could multiply it out and have three separate terms. You could gather out the sixths. You could even, I'm not saying you should do this, let's take out the sixth and take out that e to the negative x. 
So we've got e to the negative x over 6. And what would that leave? It would leave 5 cos 3x plus 1 lot of sine 3x and also 1 lot of this. But to make it match that, that would have to be e to the 3x. You could do that if you wished. I think I'll go for that one. And the principle it's got, less ink.